Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to have a look at an electrical bushing. I'll show you all of the main components. We'll look at some of its design features. I'll tell you how the bushing works. And I'll also tell you why we have bushings in the first place. So let's start by taking a look at a bushing. Here is one such bushing. This is actually an oil insulated porcelain bushing. There are two main types of bushings that you are going to see. They're classified as bulk or solid, that is one classification, and condenser or capacitance graded bushings. That is the other type of classification. This type of bushing is a solid type of bushing, that is to say it's a bulk type bushing. Bulk and solid, you can use the words interchangeably, they mean the same thing. So we've got our bulk bushing, and if we spin it around here, we can actually see the internal components. So let's just start at the top of the bushing. We've got here our upper terminal. You can see we've got four holes. We can actually connect a cable or a connector onto that terminal and we'll clamp it to the terminal. We get a very good contact surface area between the two connections. And this ensures that current can flow throughout the system and that we don't generate too much heat at the terminal. If we go on the top of the terminal, if we look from this angle, you can see we've got a piece of metal on the inside here. And that piece of metal actually runs all the way down through the bushing. You can see it's just a solid piece of metal and we call that a center conductor or central conductor or you can even just call it the conductor. It's usually going to be manufactured from bronze or aluminium or copper. Remember that bronze itself is a copper based alloy and that's what gives it its copper color. Either way, whatever material is chosen to be the central conductor is going to be a very good conductor of electricity because this conductor is going to be live and it may be at 3,000, 6,000, 11,000 volts, depending upon the electrical system served. To the side of the conductor, we've got this void space. You can see that the void actually starts at the bottom here and it actually is all around the conductor. It comes all the way up to here. And this void space over here and on the other side is full of mineral oil. We actually call it electrical grade mineral oil and we use it as an insulator. I'll come back to that in a moment. Outside of the void space, which is full of mineral oil when the bushing is in service, we actually have this outer piece here. It wraps all the way around the bushing. You see it, it's quite shiny and it's also quite smooth. This entire outer piece is manufactured from porcelain. Now porcelain is just baked clay. The type of porcelain we use for this particular bushing is actually mechanically stronger than the type of porcelain that you'll have in your home. If you want to see an example of porcelain then just go and take a look at a cup or a plate in your home and that is a basic example of porcelain. The only difference with this porcelain is that it is slightly stronger mechanically so it's less prone to cracking. The reason it has this very shiny outer surface is because on the outer surface of the porcelain, we've added a glaze and this glaze actually serves two purposes. One purpose is that when we apply the glaze, it actually puts the porcelain under compression when it sets and porcelain is a bit like concrete. It's very strong under compression. So if you squeeze porcelain, it can handle a lot of compression stress before it begins to break. This is much like concrete. However, if you stretch porcelain, in other words, if you apply tensile stress, it breaks very easily. So the glaze allows us to keep some residual compression force on the porcelain, which increases its mechanical strength. As I mentioned before, concrete is similar in this way to porcelain because it does not like to be stretched. It's not very strong under tensile stress. The other reason that we add the glaze on the outside of the porcelain is because it keeps the porcelain body 
smooth and that helps it stay clean. You'll also notice on this particular bushing that we have some arcing horns. That's the upper horn and the lower horn here. We're not going to discuss those in this particular video, but we will discuss them a little bit later in the course. On the lower side of the bushing, you can see we've got this white item wrapped around the base of the bushing. This is called a gasket. And the reason we have that gasket for this particular bushing is because we would install this electrical bushing on a transformer. So the transformer tank would be at around this level here. And then on the top side, we would have air. So from here going upwards to the top terminal, that is all the air side. And on the lower side, we've actually got oil. But why would we need to have a bushing in the first place? Well, the reason we need a bushing is because once current is flowing through a conductor, there are several things that's going to happen. One of them is that we create a magnetic field around the conductor. With direct current, the magnetic field is fairly constant. With alternating current, the magnetic field expands and contracts, and it may do this 50 or 60 times a second. This is what we refer to as the frequency. Now we're not so interested in the magnetic field that's created around the conductor. The reason that we require a bushing is because of the electric field that's created around the conductor. Every time current flows through a conductor, we're going to create an electric field. The intensity of the electric field depends upon the voltage. If we have a higher voltage, then we will have a more intense electric field. If we have a lower voltage, then we will have a less intense electric field. As the electric field intensity increases, it ionizes any insulator surrounding it. Typical things surrounding it would include air and oil. And I'm going to refer to them as the insulators. As the insulators become ionized, their ability to conduct electrical current increases. So the problem that we have with live conductors at very high voltages is that they tend to ionize any surrounding insulator and the ionization of these insulators allows current to flow to ground. There's several ways this may occur. If we have a small amount of current flowing to ground, then we will call this leakage current. All live conductors have some leakage current. It's not possible to perfectly insulate a live conductor. If we have a significant amount of leakage current, then we will get flashover, which is effectively a short circuit where large magnitude current flows from a high potential to a low potential. For example, from our live conductor, through our insulator, and straight to ground. So how does that relate to our bushing? Well, with our bushing, we have our live conductor here, and as you can see, the live conductor Let's just say for a moment this is going to be at 11,000 volts. And we can see that our transformer tank would end round about here. And the conductor is actually going to be quite close to the top of the transformer tank. That means we're going to have significant electrical stress from the center conductor here, where it tries to flow to ground to our transformer tank, which will be around this height here. In order to stop that occurring, we fill this space here with mineral oil and we manufacture the bushing from porcelain, which also has good insulation properties. So that's how we can deal with some of the radial electrical stresses that are placed on the bushing due to this electric field generated by high voltage. But there are also axle stresses placed on the bushing because there is another path that current can use to flow to ground. So we have our high voltage potential top terminal here, and then we have our grounded transformer tank round about here. And if it was possible for leakage current to flow along here and across and down and along and across and down, we can see that it's actually possible for the leakage current to reach the transformer tank. The path that the leakage current takes is actually referred to as the leakage path or the creepage path. And anything on those paths is referred to as leakage current or creepage current. 
In order to minimize leakage current, we want to actually increase the resistance along the leakage path as much as possible, as this will reduce the likelihood of flashover, that is to say, reduce the likelihood of an electric arc between the upper high potential terminal and the grounded transformer tank. So how are we going to maximize the resistance on the leakage path as much as possible without building a very, very long bushing? Well, one way for us to do that is to change the geometry of the bushing. You can see that if we had a straight bushing, the leakage path would be considerably shorter than if we had the bushing shaped as we do here. These extra bits sticking out the side, which we call rain sheds or sheds, are there to increase the length of the leakage path. Not only that, but you'll notice that the shape of the bushing is quite unique. And that's because when it rains, we actually want some of the bushing to remain dry. These sheds shield part of the bushing in order that it can remain dry. For example, the underside here and this section here would normally be dry even if it should rain. Obviously, it depends upon the direction of the rain and how intense the storm is. But the general idea is that some parts of the porcelain body remain dry. If all of the bushing was to become wet, or if it gets, for example, covered in fog and moisture, then the resistance on the leakage path is going to be far less. And we're going to increase the probability of getting a short circuit from the upper terminal, which is at high voltage potential, to our grounded electrical transformer tank. There are other factors that can also increase the likelihood of flashover. These include any breakdown of the insulation, but they may also be related to things such as pollution and the accumulation of dirt on the bushing surface, which again will reduce the resistance along the leakage path and increase the likelihood of flashover. You may also have noticed that the top side of the bushing is quite long and the lower side is quite short. When we connect the bushing to our electrical transformer, the electrical transformer is actually full of oil and some of that oil is going to travel up into the void space of the bushing and it's going to fill up the entire cavity or void space within the bushing. This mineral oil then acts as an insulator. Because the transformer tank is actually lower down than the bushing, we actually have another tank called the conservator tank, which is higher up than the main transformer tank. And that allows us to keep a positive head of pressure on the oil inside the bushing. Because oil acts as an insulator, it's also possible for us to have a much shorter bushing body on the oil side. Remember that it's also possible for leakage current to come from the underside of the transformer tank. So travel along this leakage path here. But because the mineral oil is such a good insulator, the resistance along the leakage path is far greater compared to over here, where the only insulator that we have is air. So on the air side, the bushing is a lot longer and on the oil side, it's a lot shorter. Other reasons for the bushing being a lot longer on the air side are simply that on the air side, it's open to environmental conditions, salt spray, fog, rain, dirt, sand. And on the oil side, this section here is sitting inside the transformer tank and it's not exposed to pollution or other environmental conditions. That means that the resistance along the leakage path is relatively stable and we can actually calculate that and then determine the length of the bushing. There are many other types of electrical bushing in use today, especially in the power generation industry. If you'd like to learn more about bushings, then please do check out our website. You'll find an electrical bushings course along with electrical transformer course. And we have many other types of engineering courses related to pumps, valves, heat exchangers, diesel engines, and other common machinery items. So if that interests you, then check out some of the links in the video description area. If you like this video, then please do like or share it on social media. It really does help us out. And if you haven't done so, then please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time.